The average number of commercial trees harvested per hectare in lowland rainforest in Papua New Guinea is only around 8 to 10. But when these are felled and extracted, hundreds of smaller trees are destroyed. Seedling regeneration after logging is abundant, but the species mix is dominated by fast-growing pioneer species with low to medium commercial value. And the tree seedlings are interspersed with shrubs and vines which slow down the growth of many valuable trees. Reforestation naturally means looking after the natural regeneration that starts to grow within a few weeks of logging. It means cutting non-commercial tree species except where they have some cultural significance or use. And trimming back vines and shrubs like wild bananas, thus allowing commercially or culturally valuable trees to grow faster. This process is called tending, and the best time to start tending is about 9 to 12 months after logging. During the first 10, it may be necessary to fill gaps where there are no commercial trees by transplanting valuable trees from areas where they are growing too close together. Tending is then carried out every three to four months until the commercial trees are tall enough not to be affected by competing vegetation. This stage is normally reached about two years after the first tending operation. This area is an example of natural regeneration that has taken place after logging. It is almost two years after the first tend and the trees have grown to this height, overcoming competition from weed species and vines. The species mix in here consists of the following, Vitex, Canarium, and Erima. Over at the back there, we did some transplanting of commercial desirable species into caves during the first 10, almost two years ago. And they were transplanted at a spacing of four meters according to the technique of reforestation naturally. As you can see, the trees are now at this height and there's no need for further tending. The forest can now be left alone. Reforestation naturally is carried out by villagers, both men, women and older children on their own land. This is in fact true community forestry. To illustrate how the concept was developed, I will show you a series of slides taken during research work over the last 13 years. The first few slides illustrate regeneration and rate of growth. This tree is an Albicia species growing on the slopes of Mount Lemington in the Oro province. The area where this tree is growing was devastated in 1951 when the volcano erupted. The picture was taken in 1986, so the tree is 35 years old. As you can see, it has grown very fast and is nearly 2 meters in diameter. This slide shows seedlings growing at the base of a pomitia or thorn, which is a very valuable commercial species. This is a close-up of the seedlings. You can see, they have recently germinated and are therefore ideal for use as nursery stock. In fact, some of the seedlings were transplanted in 1975 to the Popondeta Forestry Station. This is one of those seedlings, 10 years later. The next few slides show the effect of selective logging on PNG's lowland rainforests and the results of tending the natural regeneration. This picture shows a typical profile of a lowland rainforest before logging. You can see that there are only two trees 
large enough to be felled for commercial purposes, and there are a number of trees that would continue to grow if they were not damaged by the logging operations. Unfortunately, as this slide of the plot at Kumusi, Oro Province shows, many of the potential future crop trees are destroyed by careless felling and extraction. This is the same area about a year after logging, and regrowth has covered the caps left by the logging operation. This shows a lobula, which is very weak because of the seed from bananas, and a bacala seedling, which is a very valuable species. This is the same area a few months later, after the villagers had cut the bananas, vines, and non-commercial trees to allow the valuable trees to grow. And this is the same area, about two years after tending, the commercial trees have grown above the competition from weed species and there's no need for further tending. This slide shows a regenerated forest, ten years after logging. Several of the Erima trees are nearly 50 centimeters in diameter, and the undergrowth consists of a mixture of species similar to the original forest. This last slide illustrates that many villages throughout Papua New Guinea have a tradition of transplanting seedlings from trees that are useful to them. It shows an Erima tree planted by this village elder for a future canoe 27 years before the picture was taken. So you don't have to worry about the insects. As soon as they have eaten the leaves, there's nothing for them on this tree, the tree will just keep growing. And this tree has grown at least a meter in three months since we were last year. I was just saying to Patrick how much this Erima tree featured in the video lookout in Bush has grown. It has grown about 10 to 15 centimeters DBH and about 10 meters to the top height in the last two years. We have a lot of plants here. And we come up good. Number one, true lomi. You know, you know this lad divide, so all the lad divide too, all the stuff all behind here, all yeah. bi-tech stone, all too, all the come up big, right? Now you look him all, and all oh. strong lad divide. Thank you. Reforestation is carried out on a locked off forest in order to achieve sustained yield. Sustained yield forestry is a term used to describe the way in which forest products can be harvested from the forest in such a way that the productive capacity of the forest is not diminished. In terms of timber production, it means that a certain amount of timber can be harvested every so often on what is called a cutting cycle or rotation. In PNG, the cutting cycle for lowland rainforest is estimated to be 35 years. In order to achieve sustainability, an area of land has to be set aside for long-term forest management so that the forest is allowed to recover after each timber harvest. If areas of locked over forest are gardened, burned, or planted with agricultural crops, timber harvest on that land cannot be sustainable. It is therefore important for landowners to decide which areas of their land they want to see developed with agriculture crops and which areas they want to dedicate to long-term forest management. Once a decision is made to dedicate an area to long-term forest management, 
There are several ways in which a low crop forest can be managed to sustain the yield. The main methods are 1. Cutting and burning all remaining vegetation and planting with a single fast growing species. 2. Cutting strips through remaining vegetation and planting fast growing safe tolerating species along the strip line. 3. Reforestation naturally or release tending of naturally regenerated commercial species combined with enrichment planting in caves that contain no commercial species. Reforestation naturally can only be used within a year or so after logging, but is the least costly method. Yet this method can vastly increase both the number of commercial logs and the average value if the forest is logged again. The method has several other advantages, the main ones being By agreeing to reforest naturally, the customary landowners commit themselves and their land to long-term forest management. And it is well suited to PNG's land tenure system as there is no need for alienation of land. Villagers do the work so there is no need to import labor and therefore no consequential social disruption. And the technique provides rural employment for men, women and youths. By using contracts, the technique is more adaptable to custom events which would otherwise interfere with full-time employment and also to variable working hours. For example, there is no need for villagers to work from 7.45 to 4 <laughs> The technique helps conserve biodiversity, including medicinal plants and the residual stem. It also assists in more rapid recolonization of the log tower forests by plants and animals. This is a new cap created by the logging activity. Regrowth have gained height and tending is required now. Over there we've put cluster of seedlings suitable for transplanting into this cap during the first 10 and it should be done in the wet season. Here we have cluster of seedlings which have germinated from the seed bank after logging. As you can see competition has already started and the seedlings are struggling against competition from weeds and the vines. Unless tending is carried out now, which is 9 to 12 months after logging, the chances of these seedlings surviving is minimal. If a logged over area is left untouched after logging, many valuable light demanding trees are killed by being shaded out by faster growing trees such as tremor and by vines and shrubs. It is not necessary to tend whole of the log to a forest as some areas may be too steep to log and some areas are left untouched because they contain no trees of commercial size. It is therefore important that these areas are left alone as they are refuge for plants and animals. I'm now demonstrating uh, how tending is carried out in the whole of uh, West Nibirita. Uh, logged over areas. Usually after logging, you see competition is very high with the uh, weeds and commercial seedlings competing with each other. So in that case, we have to train the villagers how to go about properly tending the area. So I'm now going to demonstrate to the villagers 
how we have to be careful doing the tending. Okay. Okay. This land now. Pami walking. Mami soy mi plan also. Time, time only. Browsing the way finish. Planting the way also. Misa grow pass pass one time only this land. This land all good plan the way straight. In the areas that are tended, villagers must cut the wild bananas and non-commercial tree species close to the ground. Trees and shrubs of cultural importance to the landowners should not be cut. Vines should be carefully cut away from commercial trees and where possible are fruited. Some locked over areas, especially where there are large caps in the canopy, contain no trees of commercial value. These large caps often have to be filled with transplants of desirable species. Once such an area has been tended, that is all regrowth cleared. Two meter tall pickets or markers are placed at approximately four meter square spacing. This is so the villagers can see where the transplants are located at subsequent tents. Holes are dug at the base of the markers and commercial trees are carefully transplanted into the holes. Seedlings should be collected from clearings where it is obvious that they have germinated recently. It is very important to take care that the soil around the roots of the seedling is not disturbed. Planting holes should be prepared before a seedling is dug up and a seedling planted straight away. The first tending operation should take place in the wet season to allow the transplanted seedlings to establish their root systems prior to the onset of the dry. It is important to plant high value trees such as walnut, canarim, pencil cedar and thorn as this will attract higher income if the forest is cut again. This area seedling here is suitable for transplanting. What I'm demonstrating here is trimming of the larger lower leaves and leaving only the 